Hello Dragonfly Swarm, I'm a little sick so please excuse the stuffy voice, but today I wanted to discuss in detail all of my thoughts and opinions about Yaimiko just before her release. Because I've been getting a lot of questions on YouTube and all my Twitch livestreams as to whether or not people should pull for Miss Evil Book Lady Shrine Goddess Maneater. So I'm gonna go in detail as much as I can with the information we've been given by MiHoYo discussing Yai's playstyle, possible builds, synergies, and whether all of that makes her worth pulling for depending on what you want out of a character. As usual, if this video helps you, don't forget to like and consider subscribing if you haven't already because it really helps my channel out. Alright, we're jumping straight into the discussion. The first topic that I want to discuss is Yaimiko's playstyle in general, noting that she seems to be primarily designed as a sub DPS, and I have lots of opinions about sub DPS units so this will be an important section. My biggest concern with sub DPS units is that they very often end up being the least impactful character type of all character types in the game, those types being main DPS, sub DPS, and support characters. This is usually because a sub DPS takes on the simple role of extra off field damage, and they usually don't provide utility like a support unit can, but they also don't always provide crazy or consistent damage like a main DPS can. However, one thing that basically all sub DPS units are good at is acting as an energy battery, and I think it's safe to assume Yai will go as far as being one of the best energy batteries in the game, up there with Raiden Shogun for her constant presence on the field and multiple forms of energy generation with her Sakura turrets and bursts. And considering just about every new character released in Genshin recently has a huge energy cost and moderate to severe energy management issues, the value of energy recharge and energy circulation has significantly significantly increased over time. So at the very least, we can establish that Yai will definitely hold a place as one of the better batteries for your teams if energy management is of concern to you, but keep in mind that she won't fit onto teams that have important reactions such as Vaporize or Melt, because her own Electro application will interrupt those reactions constantly. And that's kind of the next point I want to bring up. Electro as an element is very standoffish as compared to other elements. It, it has a hard time fitting in with other elemental synergies, and is generally weak on its own anyways. So relying solely on Electro for any team building purposes has always been a bit unreliable. However, I rebuke once again, because once again, MiHoYo has recently been focusing on strengthening the power of Electro and its nicheness, not unlike how they really honed in on Geo's strengths with Ito's release, turning it into a very self-sufficient powerhouse element. They've been supplying Electro characters with lots of weapons and artifact sets such as Emblem of Severed Fate, one of the strongest sets in the game currently, might I add, in order to hone in on Electro's niche ability to circulate energy extremely fast. And with Yai coming to the game as a fast-paced quick-swap DPS, she might fit in very well as the glue for an electro meta. For example, taser comps and mono electro comps could start to see the light of day because of Yai's own ability to take advantage of them, or her ability to help her team take advantage of them. And it's important to keep in mind that Yai herself has a passive that promotes building elemental mastery in exchange for extra Sakura turret damage. All of these little bits and pieces lead me to believe that MiHoYo has designed Yai as an enabler for electro, and that's a general statement. I mean that Yai Miko could genuinely be a direct buff to electro characters as a whole. Which, circling back to my earlier point about sub DPS units would objectively put Yaimiko ahead of the curve. She'd be one of few sub DPS units that isn't only there as extra off field damage, but also as a god tier energy battery and enabler for reactions, and that's just from a surface level look at her kit. So to summarize the first portion of this video up, if you're a fan of Electro as an element or you like and actively play a lot of Electro characters, Yaimiko is probably a great investment for you. She's likely going to synergize great in mono Electro teams or quick swap teams, especially with more powerful on field Electro characters such as Raiden Shogun and Kuchi. And even if electro-focused teams don't peepo your blush though, Yai is almost certainly going to work well with other reaction-based synergies such as Yoimiya Yanfei Kli overload comps and even super conduct comps for physical carries such as Yula. Although, given the emphasis on elemental mastery as well as a huge burst damage potential, I'd say Yai is less of an enabler for physical comps and more of an enabler slash DPS hybrid for overload, electro charge, and mono electro comps. And a lot of this has to do with the current selection of gear in the game that Yai has to work with. Much of the strongest options for Yai right now focus mostly on strengthening the multiple facets of electro centered team comps, such as, for example, the most popular artifact set as of recent, the Emblem of Severed Fate set. Assuming Yaimiko is compatible with this set, i.e. she has a high burst cost, the set will allow her to exploit an extremely fast paced and high damage burst playstyle that works especially well when paired with Raiden, which is partly what leads me to believe the two will have such an amazing synergy together, but I'll discuss that later. But the Emblem set is definitely the most speculative choice, albeit the highest payoff if it does end up working for Yai, but that speculativeness made me search for other potential set options, and so I also considered the 4-piece Thunder Soother set, half because I despise 2-piece 2-piece sets and also half because I assume with Yai's emphasis on reactions, she's gonna make electro charge comps stronger than we've ever seen. And the thing about the 4-piece Thunder Soother is that it works amazing with electro charge comps. This is because the 35% increased damage against enemies affected by electro will still apply on enemies that are being electro charged because the electro doesn't immediately disappear when it reacts with hydro. And while these two sets are by no means Yai's only options, they're definitely the most interesting 
interesting and tie into her potential synergies and versatility the most. But in order to fully understand whether it's worth pulling for Yai from a preparation standpoint, we have to look at team synergies as well, not just the artifacts that enable the team synergies. So as I mentioned a few times in this video and in my previous video actually, if you have Raiden Shogun, I'd say Yai is absolutely a worthwhile investment, objectively speaking of course. The two of them undoubtedly have a lot of synergy together, what with their ability to bounce off of each other's kits effortlessly and have a huge damage output slash field presence, plus they'll likely be able to pilot both Mono Electro and Electro Charge team comps to the front of the meta for at least a few patch updates. But I figure Yai will also work really well with Electro characters such as Kuching for her ability to battery Kuching, not unlike Fischl is famous for doing, as well as providing huge extra Electro damage and incentive for Electro Charge comps. And finally, the whole Overload thingy. Overload is a relatively controversial reaction because of its mid-tier damage output and its knockback thingy that makes most melee characters unable to keep up with it. But with characters like Yoimiya and Yanfei, Overload is actually pretty easy to keep up with and get good value out of. And though I wouldn't necessarily choose Yai over Raiden in a Yoimiya or Yanfei overloaded comp, I would choose Yai over just about every other Electro sub DPS, considering how fast it looks like she applies Electro and her ability to cover Yanfei and Yoimiya's downtime almost perfectly. I will say though, Beto is an extremely powerful pick for Overload comps and Electro charge comps that can easily, almost too easily as of right now, substitute Yai Miko, which is my biggest concern overall for Yai. As of right now, Yai doesn't seem to offer very much more than omnipresent electro damage and battery potential, which just about every other electro sub DPS in the game can also do. The only redeeming factor of this, I fear, is Yai's importance in reaction based comps, because currently we don't actually know how dramatically her Sakura turret damage scales with elemental mastery. If it's a lot, then she definitely will be a cut above the rest, and I'll eat my words and say sorry for assuming other characters can substitute her so easily. Who am I kidding? I'll say sorry and beg for my life even if I'm right. It's Yai Miko. But if it turns out her elemental mastery scaling isn't anything more than a flashy build gimmick, my biggest concern with Yai's pulling worth is that she would be easily replaceable unless you're really interested in the Yai Raiden synergy. And obviously, in regards to Yai's damage in general, we don't have any official numbers, and we won't have any numbers until she's released. So, taking into account all of that analyzing, I want to leave you with a cut and dry summary of my thoughts on Yai's worth. <clears throat> if you're looking for a synergy with Raiden Shogun, Electro Charge teams, or Mono Electro teams, Yai is very much worth pulling for. If you're looking for a new sub DPS or energy battery, Yai on paper doesn't seem too much crazier than other more accessible options, but it's entirely possible that she will be considering her scaling potential. And most obviously, if you're looking for the most beautiful, most chaotic, evil natured troll who would definitely have a pranks YouTube channel in an alternate universe, Yai Miko is the most worthwhile unit you could ever pull for. But that about finishes out my thoughts on Yai Miko's worth just before release, so uh, if this video helped you decide, or if it sent you into a pit of decisive turmoil, feel free to like and consider subscribing, or you could totally join my discord server or follow me on twitch cause I'd love to see you around. Anyways, I'm gonna go get unsick as soon as possible, cause I gotta be strong and healthy when I bring home Yai Miko on my viewers accounts on twitch this Tuesday, February 15th at 10pm EST. No, that was not a shameless plug, it was just a